John F. Kennedy, when he was President of the United States, cut the highest personal income tax rate from 91% to 70%. He cut the lowest rate from 20% to 14%. His initiatives, he cut the corporate tax rate from 52 to 48%. He tried to cut it to 46%. But thank God Barry Goldwater and the Republicans were able to block him from doing this irresponsible move. <laughs> Bob Dole, as a congressman from Kansas, voted against cutting the highest tax rate on income from 91% to 70% because we couldn't afford the revenue losses. John F. Kennedy put in the investment tax credit for the first time in U.S. history to increase the incentives to save, invest, increase productivity. John F. Kennedy shortened depreciable lives for plant and equipment expenditures for the same reasons to increase the incentives to save, invest, and increase productivity. John F. Kennedy cut taxes on traded products, called the Kennedy Round Tariff Negotiation, to increase free trade and, and the ability to move goods and services across national boundaries without major impediments. I mean, spectacular stuff. We had the go-go 60s under Kennedy. He was almost exactly Ronald Reagan as president. In fact, the president used to, with me all the time, would tease and he'd say, you know, Art, I'm looking at the record there, I, I wasn't all that good a governor now, was I? I said, I said, well, now, sir, those are your words. I know, I know. But, <laughs> but I mean, the truth is Ronald Reagan learned and became the greatest president of the last century. There's nothing wrong with learning. There's nothing wrong with changing when you change from a bad answer to a good answer. You know, when you look at this world, people respond to incentives. People don't work to pay taxes. They work to get what they can after tax. It's that incentive that motivates people to quit leisure and go to work or to quit one job and go to work somewhere else. Businesses don't invest uh, to go bankrupt. Businesses don't invest uh, for social conscience reasons. They invest to make an after-tax rate of return for their shareholders. And they move. They can change. You know, people don't save because their incomes are high. People save to make an after-tax return on their investments. These are the incentives that happen. If you make an, an activity more attractive, people will do more of it. If you make an activity less attractive, they'll do less of it. The whole purpose of supply-side economics on a national level is to have low-rate, flat taxes, sound money, free trade open borders, and minimal regulations to achieve the objectives you want. No one here anywhere wants government to go to zero. That's not the dream. The dream is that all taxes save sin taxes are bad. They all are bad. What you want to do is do the least damage to your society to collect the requisite revenues to do the projects the government needs and so desperately should do for its citizenry. I'm going to leave you with one last one here, the most immoral act a government can ever perpetrate against its citizenry is to enact policies that have the effect of destroying the production base from whence all beneficence ultimately flows. Thank you.